as the U.S. celebrates the 20-year anniversary of the September 11 attacks. President Joe Biden urged for unity as the country remembers the victims of the September 11 attacks. The attacks on Washington, D.C., New York, and Pennsylvania that left 2,977 people from 19 nation states. To give us an update on how the commemorations are going, we are now, we'll be joined by our S24 reporter, William Denslow, in New York, the United States of America, to give us an update, detailed information on uh, this particular story, on what really happened, and there's some more stories and more details on this particular topic. Hello, good evening. Absolutely. So just to really go over what's taking place today for this memorial. So I'm just a few hundred meters away from the 9-11 memorial here in Lower Manhattan. And as that takes place every single year on this anniversary, the families of those that lost loved ones, nearly 3,000 people died on 9-11. Those names are being read out allowed that's punctuated with six moments of silence to mark the two times that two planes hit the Twin Towers the two times that both North and South Towers fell as well as when planes crashed into a field in Shanksville Pennsylvania as well as crashed into the Pentagon in Arlington Virginia just outside of Washington DC now Three the sitting or former presidents were in attendance here uh, in New York. Um, and we heard an address from President Biden on Friday released on social media. He said that in the aftermath of 9-11, we saw a great sense of unity in the United States. He said that that unity has somewhat wavered in recent years. He said that it's critical that as a nation, there's a return to that sense of togetherness. Here at this in other cities to mark this 20th anniversary of what transpired on 9-11. Now, William, this year's commemoration occurs under the shadow of the recent departure of your ANC natural forces from Afghanistan and the takeover of the nation by the Taliban. Just how is the mood compared to past commemoration? There's certainly a sense of frustration that we've seen from some survivors, some victims, families calling this year on even President Biden not to attend events like this here in New York because they want to see the declassification of some documents relating to what happened on 9-11, especially some believe uh, that there are links to Saudi Arabia that still have not come to light. Riyadh, of course, has vehemently denied any such involvement in those attacks on 9-11. Since those calls for President Biden uh, to not attend have come out, pres the President has in fact signed the executive order calling for the declassification of some of those documents. That means that over the next six months we'll see a review and release of some of these documents relating to 9-11. Of course, when it comes to the troop withdrawal, the real question is what does this mean for security here in the United States? President Biden has maintained that Afghanistan will never again be a safe haven for terrorism. There's a question for whether that indeed will be the case and whether the policies, the counter-terrorism policies over the last two decades have been successful. Today here in New York City we've seen a heightened security presence. The message from officials is that there's no credible threat, but it's a clear sign that New York is not to be messed with. No, the, 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 the tone we've heard mm. from the likes of former President George W. Bush is that many currently... Yes, we can mm. go ahead. Well, the message from George W. Bush is that many current serving active members of the military weren't even alive on 9-11. He says that because the, threat, because the globe has changed so dramatically after what happened here in New York and in uh, Virginia as well as in Pennsylvania 20 years ago, that is why it's vital to continue to remember 
what happened because those that are serving overseas and the, the entire geopolitical landscape has transformed two decades ago and that is why it's still absolutely crucial to honour those that died as well as to keep in mind what took place uh, because it's still affecting the world around us today. And now with the attacks of September 11, actually in the war on terror and changed the way they lived in terms of global security. What's the implication of the withdrawal of the U.S. from Afghanistan on the war on terrorism? Well, speaking to security analysts here in New York, what many say is that the threat of terrorism has somewhat changed over the past two decades. If we cast our minds back over a decade ago, the real fear here in New York City, as well as a number of uh, cities around the world, was really bracing for the next large-scale coordinated attack. Just a few years after 9-11, there was chat and real concerns that there was perhaps a coordinated attack being planned on New York City's subway system. That, of course, never materialized. What we've seen, though, in more recent years is the threat of these so-called lone wolf attacks, attacks that are perhaps somewhat smaller in scale, less resources required, but can still have a huge amount of damage. I'm standing here on the West Side Highway, where in October 2017, a person drove a car down this bike path you can see just behind me, killing eight people. Now, that has been the deadliest terrorist attack since 9-11 here in the city uh, of New York and that really just is an example of how the threat from terrorism has changed. The mayor of the city has said uh, that they need to find a balance between counter-terrorism and personal liberty and of course here in the US over the past two decades there's been huge debate about whether that balance has been, uh, has been correct. You know, we have we have observed and we have witnessed. Obviously, everybody has witnessed the rapid takeover of Afghanistan by the Taliban. Is this an indication of pre-September 11 hostilities? And how have the U.S. and its allies prepared to tackle this new reality? Well, there's been a huge pivot from the international community in, in recent. Uh, in recent days and really to try and gauge what's happened in Afghanistan. What we've uh, seen from the international community is a sense and a real message that Afghanistan can never again be a safe haven for terrorists. That's been made very clear by international leaders as well as here in New York at the United Nations Security Council. President Biden has said himself that uh, Afghanistan won't be a safe haven and that a presence in the country isn't required uh, for America and its allies to be able to uh, keep uh, their citizens safe. They can, they've demonstrated that in other parts of the world by not needing a so-called troops on the ground to be able to keep tabs uh, on terrorist networks. But there's certainly a, a concern moving forward, the fact that 20 years on this war of war on terror, many deem it as a war that has not been won by any stretch of the imagination. But officials, uh, at least here in New York and around the US on 9-11, say that um, what has transpired over the two decades that have passed when it comes to counter-terrorism efforts uh, mean that the nation is now safer uh, than it was a couple of decades ago. But critics all point to the perhaps loss of personal freedoms because of it and will question whether it's been worth it. All right, William, before I let you go, any way that you'd love to put across? Anything else that you'd love to add on? Well, essentially, the message here in, in New York that we're uh, hearing from the survivors, those that lost loved ones, is that this is very much an open wound for them. Of course, nearly 3,000 people died two decades ago, but more than 3,000 people have died since 9-11 because of health complications from inhaling toxic fumes on that day two decades ago. So this is certainly a traumatic event here in New York. It claimed so many thousands of lives and it has continued to claim the lives of so many New Yorkers uh, in the years that have transpired since 9-11. All right, William, thank you so much for time. Thank you so much for the update. It's been a delight having you talked to you this evening.
have a good one. All right, that was our S24 reporter, William Denslow in the New York, the United States of America, giving us an update on the commemoration of the 20-year anniversary of September 11th.